Astronomer Bill Hartman has spent his life studying the events of the early solar system. The record of the very first part of the Earth's history, all of that is wiped away on the Earth itself because we have erosion and rain and continental drift and continents colliding and mountains coming up and so on. But all is not lost. There is a record of Earth's earliest days, just not on Earth. It turns out the best place to look is on nearby Mercury and Mars. Their surfaces have barely changed in over four billion years, providing us with a unique record of events in the very earliest days of our solar system. They're dotted with ancient impact craters. You start looking at those craters and you discover that there are not only 100-mile craters and 200-mile craters, there's 600-mile features, I mean, some very large objects. These craters paint a picture of an intensely violent period, of a solar system littered with cosmic debris, where millions of asteroids and comets smashed into the young planets. In the thick of this all-out assault, the Earth, too, must have been struck. It was a window into the early history of the Earth, and it made us realize that the Earth itself has had this tremendous history of impacts, enormous impacts that could have really damaged the whole planet. It got people thinking about what would be the effects of giant impacts on the Earth. Hartman realized that it wasn't just small asteroids hitting the planets. There were much larger objects, too. And the larger the object, the more dramatic the consequences. So the impact process, it's, it's a wonderful kind of paradox. On the one hand, the small impacts tend to make everything the same, millions and millions of impacts averaged out, but the big impacts give individual personalities to the planet. Take our planet, tilted on its axis at 23 degrees with a nearby orbiting satellite, the Moon. We used to think that they'd been born together until Hartman proposed a radical theory. The Earth had been hit by something the size of another planet, creating that tilt and the Moon. The key to our idea was that as the planets grew, you had the finished planets, but you still had leftover bodies. If one of those crashes into the Earth, just as the Earth has finished forming, that can blow out material from which the Moon could form in orbit around the Earth. Picture the scene. The newly formed Earth hurtling round the Sun, and loads of other planets doing exactly the same thing including this one, Thea, about the size of Mars. It was orbiting the Sun at exactly the same distance as the Earth. The two planets were on a collision course. Thea hit the Earth at 25,000 miles per hour with the force of billions of megaton bombs. ripped off huge sections of the Earth's crust. Billions of tons of debris blasted into space. A ring of red hot dust and rock formed around the Earth. Over the next hundred years, the rocks and dust slowly clumped together into a ball one-fiftieth the size of Earth. We call it the Moon. When Hartman suggested the idea in the 1960s, people found it hard to accept. Scientists were thinking of everything in terms of slow geologic processes, one grain of sand at a time, you know, wearing down mountains. To think of something as 
colossal as the moon forming as a result of a single event was hard for people to swallow. But then Hartman got the first real clue that his theory might be true. The Apollo project. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. American astronauts made six visits to the moon. They explored its surface, drove around its craters, and brought back 840 pounds of moon rock. For the first time, scientists could find out what the moon was actually made of. The lunar samples had a remarkably similar chemistry to the outermost layer of the Earth's crust. To most researchers, it was an interesting discovery. But to Hartman, it was vital new evidence. So you have crustal rocks, you have rocks on the surface, and a big impact comes in and blows all those crustal rocks away. And that material goes into space and forms the moon. Many scientists were still skeptical. They just couldn't see how a massive impact could create the moon and the Earth as they are today. I actually had people telling me we should exhaust every other theory first because this was such an outlandish idea. It was a chance meeting at a conference with astrophysicist Robin Canop that gave Hartman the breakthrough he was looking for. She was using computer models to study Saturn's moons. Bill Hartman came up to me after my talk and asked me, have you ever thought about applying your models about how moons form within and near Saturn's rings to the origin of the moon? And I said, no. So she tried it. Canup used modeling software to recreate the early solar system. Then she plotted a planetary collision of the kind Hartman was suggesting. So we're four and a half billion years ago at the end of the Earth's formation. And we're in space and we're watching as a small planet, the planet on the right, is about to hit the young Earth, represented by the larger planet on the left. The collision takes place and as we see it hit, it hits in a glancing blow. And you can see the impactor is completely destroyed by the collision. Thea, the impactor, is annihilated. Earth survives, but only just. Now this collision is incredibly violent, so violent that there's enough energy to completely melt the Earth. And in fact, at the end of this impact, the Earth is surrounded by an atmosphere of vaporized rock. Trillions of tons of debris blast out into space. Here we see part of the impacting planet sheared out into this long arm of material that produces a disk that we're seeing almost edge on in this view. And it's from that disk that the moon later coalesces. Canop's model demonstrates that the moon was probably made of debris from both Thea and Earth. It explains why those moon rocks were so similar to rocks from the Earth's crust. So I actually called my colleague and said, you're not going to believe this, but I tried, I tried this Mars-sized impactor case with about a 45-degree impact angle, and everything worked. And he said, you better check it again. And so I did check it again and did many more of these simulations. And sure enough, that type of impact is the one that uh, gives us the Earth-Moon system today. Canop's work was further evidence that Hartman's radical theory might just be right. So it was very exciting as Robin did her models and they started to say, yes, there can be moon-forming debris left in orbit around the Earth and the moon would form from that debris.